what we're seeing is the evolution. So you and I went to Redmond to see Bing, Bing, um, and the next generation of Bing, Bing, search. I, I'm going to do that a few more times. Oh my gosh, done. Um, you know, AI, ChatGPT powered search, um, and of course, uh, adding it to the Edge browser. And I don't know about you. Are you using it now? You- I am. I'm using it. Yep. If nothing else, a logic check on on some things, but also really checking out the the experience and see how it's it's improved. You know, they added that uh, that uh, uh, slider bar for you know, do you want it to be creative? Do you want it more balanced? Do you want it more precise? And I thought I'd want more precise, but I left it on uh, more balanced. It's a lot more fun. Interesting, interesting. And so I'm using it, um, and I think. I'm starting to understand it and find it increasingly more value. But what did you and I say that was going to be most interesting uh, wasn't really the open internet and the next generation large language models. We said what's going to get more interesting is when the data that we create, the proprietary data that we create through our systems of record that sit in our data warehouses, that is part of our meeting data, that is part of our customer daily interactions that can be then incorporated into and added to the uh, open data of the internet. And then of course, the social graph that companies like Microsoft have from technology like LinkedIn, and you start putting all this together and it gets really, really interesting. So Microsoft, I think the evolution is beginning to become clear. Uh, This particular announcement was around Dynamics 365 Viva Sales, uh, which is, you know, customer service, sales, CRM, and it's about the co-pilot. And Microsoft's going to be very consistent in its uh, explanation that co-pilot is all about this technology is supposed to work alongside you, not in place of people. Having said that, it does some pretty important things and it takes it most of the way there. Um, You know, in customer service, you know, it's going to have advanced chat capabilities uh, to, you know, generate emails to customers, summaries of of meetings that you have, um, and even, you know, being able to import pricing, product information, and create proposals uh, instantaneously. It also has uh, marketing capabilities that could help you uh, drive customer insights. You can, um, you know, recommend customer segments to work with and even make suggestions of topics in terms of what should be put in front of customers. So this is moving very, very quickly, Pat. Um, And it's being streamlined. You know, Copilot was originally uh, part of the GitHub. uh, And, you know, you're seeing how this is kind of manifesting throughout Microsoft's entire ecosystem to create a very streamlined AI builder. And that's going to allow developers to use low code uh, to incorporate generative AI models uh, across the portfolio, you know, so where does it go from here? My take is we're going to see chat GPT, uh, incorporated across every part of the Microsoft ecosystem, not to mention, uh, in the Viva sales announcements, they also announced that this technology would work inside of Salesforce. Um, and the reason I think that's really important to mention is of course, Salesforce came out with their GPT and we'll talk more about that. Let's do it in another podcast. But the point is, is The arms race isn't only about the large language models for the open internet. Now we're seeing an arms race of large language model and generative AI incorporation into this application. And this is pretty exciting. Um, So I see this spanning across the entire, you're gonna see more GPT in Azure, you're gonna see more GPT in security tools and modules, you're gonna see more GPT in uh, data and analytics tools that are gonna sit uh, at the PaaS level. You're going to see GPT everywhere. The Copilot is going to go everywhere. It's eventually just going to be the Microsoft Copilot. That's my take. No proof. Um, but what's really cool here is we're streamlining workflows. Pat, we're, you know, you and I do 100 meetings a week. Wouldn't it be great at the end of the week when you've done 100 meetings to just get a quick summary of what you met about, what's important, what follow-up you've committed yourself to? Can it actually write that? And by the way, it'd be pretty cool if all of our commentary on shows like this, hey, a hey, uh, co-pilot, write a blog post in my voice that takes the summation of the second segment of this week's 6-5 podcast and turn it into an article for my Forbes column. Dude, I mean, really? 
Freaking no, home. I know. I mean, I'm super excited about that. That does push the uh, the lines of, I don't know, analyst credibility and, and stuff like that. But it sure is uh, exciting. And, you know, as long as my opinions got in there. And actually, let me restate that. If it's based on what we've already said and what we've already talked about, I do think that's fair game. So Pat, that's not only it, incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. No, it totally is. And, and by the way, um, getting uh, generative AI into Dynamics 365 is where, for my estimation, the excitement starts. The industry, uh, if, I mean, analytics have been around for, I mean, forever. I mean, I started work in 1990 and we had analytics to a, a structured database. And, you know, I don't know, it, it did move the ball forward, but there was very little automation and intelligence that would just be there. What I'm super excited about is it relates to things like supply chain, things like uh, CRM, things like HRM, those to me are super exciting as to what this technology can bring. And because it's operating on a smaller data set and a private data set, I believe that what comes back will be more accurate. So you train on a gigantic data set, but you apply the data of your enterprise, which is going to be smaller, by the way. You bring in multiple data sets to help you make uh, that that can that control, and with a company like Microsoft too, when it comes to things like security, uh, it really does just follow the same lines of how the data is secured in in the first place. So I know there needs to be that security checkbox because it's important, but I also think that uh, enterprise search we saw the same exact thing, which which was oh my gosh, some stuff came back in my enterprise search that. I didn't know it was open to everybody. Um, and we're gonna have little oopsies like that, but but none of this uh, none of this is new. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. And, and by the way, one thing that is worth mentioning is the pace of innovation is mind boggling. The speed in which Microsoft is doing this, and of course it's it's putting um, it's you know, it's putting uh, what's the right word, pressure on all the competition to move faster, but I've never seen a pace coming out of big companies at quite this, this rate. It's really interesting to watch. 